One of the biggest blessings in my life has been that I got to live here in the conference house, in the caretaker's quarters, two different times, both for a period of about 10 years each. So for a total of about 20 years. And my children really grew up here in Conference House Park. Uh, this is where we lived, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful blessing in our lives for which I will always be grateful. It was built around 1670. This house is historically important. On September 11th of 1776, there was a peace conference held here, and it was the only peace conference of the Revolutionary War. Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and Edward Rutledge met here with Lord Admiral Howe, who was here representing the King of England. The peace conference was a failure. They were not able to come to any agreement, and so the Revolutionary War continued. Prior to retiring, I worked for a local historic house museum. I'm 66 years old and I live in Staten Island, New York. My husband's name is Anthony and I have a son named Christian and a daughter named Antonia. I was often feeling very tired and fatigued and I went to my primary care doctor and she did various tests on me, including an EKG and blood tests and everything, and nothing really surfaced to show what was causing my enormous fatigue. My name is Leanne, and I have carotid artery disease, or CAD. So the carotid arteries are the two arteries that travel in the front of the neck here. They're paired with another arteries in the back called the vertebral arteries. So these four arteries take blood from the heart to the brain. Quite an important organ, as we all would agree. And, and so when carotid arteries become diseased, and by that I mean where they develop plaque buildup, uh, we call it carotid artery disease, that can give us uh, problems, most notably stroke. So risk factors for CAD include age, male gender, um, although certainly women and, and younger people can get CAD, and then people who smoke, obesity, people with diabetes, people with high cholesterol and high blood pressure all are at risk for CAD. In 2012, I had gone with my dog to obedience class and came home and went upstairs to get changed and I felt a sort of vague um, heartburn. Um, by the time I got to the top of the stairs, I was sweating tremendously and um, just wasn't feeling right and the heartburn was getting worse. So I decided um, I would hop in the shower. And as I was in the shower even, the pain in my chest was getting worse, and then I felt it radiating down my arm. And I felt a little bit of stiffness in my jaw as well. So I got out of the shower and I called 911, and I went downstairs, dripping wet again in my bathrobe, sweating profusely, feeling weaker, feeling more and more pain in the chest area. I got out the front door, locked the door, leaving the dogs in the house, sat on my front stoop, and by the time the ambulance arrived, I was no longer able to even stand up. I was in Manhattan in the city with my son. I was living in an apartment in the Midtown and going to school. We got a call from a friend of Lee to the effect that she was having a heart problem and uh, she sounded really upset. 
So we uh, jumped into the car and we drove back to Staten Island to see what was what. Uh, and she was already admitted into the local hospital. I was rolled out of the ambulance on the gurney directly into the operating room where they placed a stent in my right coronary artery. Uh, and the relief after they did that was immediate. I had not been aware until the heart attack that I even had this problem. Around 2020, I decided that it really is very important to uh, be proactive and to seek out the best doctors that you think you can find. That's kind of how I ended up at NYU with my fantastic cardiologist. And he is the one that referred me to Dr. Maldonado, a vascular doctor. Well, Leanne's a wonderful, a lovely lady. While she didn't have a stroke or any symptoms of, of a TIA or a mini stroke, she had some dizziness, I believe. She was pretty um, healthy, although she had a history of a heart attack and certainly had coronary disease. Um, so not a low risk patient. Dr. Maldonado had several tests done on me, including ultrasounds and other ways of measuring uh, what was going on with my vascular system. And that's when he saw that I had a buildup of plaque in my um, left interior carotid artery. And uh, at that point, apparently it wasn't that bad. There are two types of patients. There's the symptomatic patient, the patient who presents with a history of a stroke or a mini stroke. And in that patient, even a moderate or 50% narrowing warrants some sort of intervention because we know that that plaque is at risk for causing further stroke. The other type of patient is a patient who does not have a symptom, the asymptomatic patient. And in those patients, generally, we only consider intervening if the narrowing is greater than 80%. So in Leanne's case, that narrowing had progressed over the years as we watched her to reach 80%. At that point, we chose to intervene. He told me that I needed to have surgery to correct this problem, or I would be in danger of suffering a stroke. So CAD can be managed in one of three ways. It can be managed with medical management. Uh, it can be managed with surgery with an open operation called an endarterectomy. And then it can be treated with an endovascular approach where we deliver and deploy stents and opens up the artery and reestablishes flow. And the stent can be delivered through a puncture in the groin, which has been around since about 2000, a little earlier. The TCAR procedure is the latest newcomer to the group, and this is a procedure that's also minimally invasive, although it does require a small little incision over the collarbone. But through that incision, a stent is delivered directly into the artery, and it's done so in a very clever way where the flow is temporarily reversed so that any debris that might dislodge during the procedure does not travel north to the brain, but instead travels south into a little filter and it prevents stroke that way. And in this fashion, it really offers great protection. TCAR has a great track record. It has a greater than 98% technical success rate, uh, a very low 1% or lower instance of stroke complication, very low. So it has a very good track record so far. And after I had uh, the procedure, I felt more energetic and able to cope more with uh, you know, just all kinds of things, whether it's reading or concentration, physical activity, all of those things were improved. This one came out nicer, didn't it? I like that one. Yeah, I do too. 
We are kind of a gardening family. Our son, Chris, has surpassed both of our abilities and his ability to grow wonderful uh, vegetables and fruits and flowers beyond anything that we've ever been able to grow. So it's something that we share in the family that we all like to plant seeds and see things grow and flourish. Yeah, I, I love gardening myself. It's something that I've uh, you know, adopted, I think, from my mother, who's always been a big gardener, um, and it's something we enjoy together. I care about my mother, I care about my family, and to see my mom take care of herself and to be proactive and, and try to do what's best for her is a great feeling for me as her son. She underwent a T-car procedure, and we were able to take care of this narrowing, and, and she's now uh, recovered beautifully and, and living her best life. I feel uh, grateful that all the advances that have been made in medicine and the technology behind the newer surgeries, which seem to be less risky than some of the older forms of surgeries, I'm very grateful those things have been developed. Well, it's, it's quite gratifying to uh, realize that at least the, uh, the serious carotid artery disease has pretty much been uh, moved into the background. Anthony and I will soon be taking a trip overseas to visit with our daughter, our son-in-law, and our grandchildren, and we're really looking forward to that. So I am very, very grateful to be alive. Life is good. 